Film fans, YouTube. Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am Josh, your movie apprentice, and today I am going to be looking at 2024's The Crow, directed by Rupert Sanders and starring Bill Skarsgård and FKA Twig. This follows the story of Eric and Shelley, who are killed off in a merciless way, leading to a crow to resurrect the body of Eric in order to right the wrongs done before. Before I get into my review, if you like seeing our channel, click the like button and subscribe for more video reviews that's coming all the time. But without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So this is a high risk reboot as when it comes to rebooting films that are cult classics, whilst the fan base may be smaller, that particular fan base tends to be a lot more rabid and hold the original franchise near and dear to their heart. And whilst I am a big fan of the 1994 original, I will be trying my absolute best to look at The Crow 2024 as its own particular entity, trying not to take into account every other incarnation. And I will give it props for the fact that it does try to do something and it is very creative in what it is trying to do. The kill sequences are very well done. There's a fantastic sequence in Opera House towards the end of the film that is just masterful to watch and I will say this whole idea that whilst the crow entity is an invincible being doesn't mean they can't feel the pain of what is going on so when we're seeing him taking these bullets these stab wounds and these grievous injuries throughout the film's runtime you could almost get the sense that it's probably better to die than to experience pain such as what is he experiencing throughout the film's runtime that is a unique angle to approach the immortal protagonist. But unfortunately, The Crow, whilst it does have those strong elements to it, as well as a cast that performs perfectly fine, it is a film that I found myself really bored by. I mean, to the point where I was almost falling asleep at certain moments. To start off with, the film tries to do more with the romance between Eric and Shelley. There is definitely an element of trying to really hammer home their love for each other and they spend a good half hour of the movie setting things up before the inevitable deaths that will set this immortal being going for revenge plotline into motion. However, I found myself not really caring about the romance. It was just two attractive people that make out and get naked together a few times. There is never a sense that their romance feels genuine to me. It felt like it was more of a fling a star-crossed lovers romance, two absolute burnouts that escape rehab together. It doesn't feel like there is a true love element to it. It feels like they probably could have had the potential to get to that point. They were very much in the honeymoon phase for the entirety of the romantic segment, which meant that I really did not care about the romance. I found it very dull. And when the whole core of the film is built by the motivation to bring Shelley back from the dead, which is a thing that Eric is promised in this quest from revenge, it doesn't stick with me in any way, shape or form. Because I didn't care about that romance, I could not really get behind this quest to get Shelley back that Eric goes on for the latter half of the film's runtime. Our main antagonist, played by Danny Hudson, is decent. I like the idea of this older gentleman that has made a deal with Satan himself in order to gain immortal life. I enjoyed that idea. He's a good concept of a character, but he doesn't feel very fleshed out and feels very dull by comparison to his second in command, who was a more engaging presence throughout the film's runtime. There was a particular subplot involving that character, involving a pianist that seems to just vanish from the film after a certain point. I was waiting for that character to come back into play during the final act, but they never did. They just disappear during the half waypoint. And the whole limbo aspect felt very odd. We never really explain as to what this limbo area is or the entity that Eric speaks to. But the fact he keeps going back and forth between this limbo area and reality, that for me was something that I felt was a bit overused. And the fact that jumping between the real world, the material plane, and this limbo area seems to bend time in a way, like genuinely bends time in terms of locations and when people die. It is very baffling. For example, Eric's body seems to get left 
where he is killed off originally. And it doesn't feel like there's any reason for him to be in that building other than to conveniently be around for the first of his line of revenge killings. And that's another thing. When it comes to going after the people that took their lives, there's no satisfaction from it. A lot of them, it feels very in and out. It is done. It is over with. There is no artistic or poetic way in which they take him out. Is very much here is henchman number one, here is henchman number two, henchman number three, etc., etc., until we get to the big boss. And that is something that was very lacking for me. I can't really get behind the whole revenge aspect when A, him coming back to life isn't driven by pure revenge. He is literally given an offer to go back and right the wrongs because their lives were taken by someone that should not have even been on earth at that moment due to the deal that this entity has made with the devil themselves and that opens up a lot of questions because it is implied that this person has been taking lives for possibly centuries at this point so why is it that only now because of eric and shelley's death is someone brought back by the crow to exact revenge and send this person to hell. It raises a few questions on that front. And when the whole film was built off the true, genuine romance between Eric and Shelley, it's just a romance that I personally couldn't buy. And as a result, that meant that the whole film suffered because the skeleton, the pure core concept of why Eric is going down this path is completely lost to me. It's not something I can truly buy. And as a result, while The Crow 2024 does try its best to be unique in its own way and do creative things like the way they use Eric's abilities of immortality to demonstrate some very interesting kills. I like that element of it. And like I said, the opera house sequence is great. But by that point, I was fully checked out of the movie. I was very bored watching it. And the crow look, we don't even get it till towards the end of the movie. Like say what you want about the look, at least with and I will make this the only comparison. The original one, the crow look happens pretty quickly before he even gets into the thick of his powers. Whereas in this, it feels like it's very wishy-washy when his powers take effect. And the lack of connection between himself and the crow is another downgrade for me as well. The crow 2024 for me just doesn't really feel like it fully utilizes the potential, especially with a modern audience. It felt like this film was what everyone always says the original one was, which is an edgy goth movie. This film lacks the heart, the sense of humor, and the pure emotion in it. How have I ended up caring more about the relationship in the original when it's told mainly through flashbacks and quick glimpses as he's trying to remember his past life, versus this one where the film dedicates a good quarter of its runtime to building that relationship. That in itself is a great flaw of the movie, and as a result, this film just did not really work for me. Before I get into my grade, if you like seeing our channel, click the like button and subscribe for more video views that's coming all the time. Without further ado, let's grade this. The Crow 2024, whilst it is performed well across the board by the actors and has some interesting ideas in there, it feels like because of the lack of connection I feel towards the main romantic plot of the movie means I can't really buy into the quest that Eric goes on for the latter half of the movie. There was no sense of pure love revenge, and it's more of just a quest for love that I could not really buy. I'm gonna have to say that for me, The Crow 2024 is a cold cup of tea. So The Crow 2024, have you seen it? If you have, let me know you thought down in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Even excluding the original, is this a movie that worked for you or were you bored for it like myself? Let me know in the comments below, coming up on the channel. I'm gonna be doing a late review of Blink Twice, as well as Afraid in the next few days. So stay tuned for those, as well as my August movies tier list that I will be releasing. Not at the first day of September, it will be a couple of days because there are a couple of movies that are coming out literally the day before August ends, so I need to get through those before I can do that tier list. But until next time, everybody, I am Josh, I have been Movie Apprentice, and I'll see you all in the next video.